Flash floods hit KL. Administrative EMCO in Kota Sota Kada effective midnight. Thanks for joining us here on News at 10. I'm Brendan Lepal. Flash floods struck major parts of Kuala Lumpur today following a torrential downpour which began at 2 p.m. Among the worst affected areas are Jalan Dang Wangi, Jalan Campbell, the Ampang Highway near Bank Simpana Nacional, and the Wangsa Maju LRT station. This was confirmed by a Kuala Lumpur Fire and Rescue Department spokesman when contacted on the matter. According to the Kuala Lumpur Fire and Rescue Department, the water level had risen as high as 3 metres above the road. Reports of flash floods came in from these areas between 4.25pm and 5.25pm. In a release statement, the spokesman said the fire stations which responded to these flash floods were Hang Tua, Didi Wangsa, as well as Jalan Tun Raza. Several cars were caught in the flash floods at Lobo Ampang near Masjid Jamek LRT station. The smart tunnel has also been closed to activate its flash flood system. The government will be implementing an Administrative Enhanced Movement Control Order EMCO, on the Kota Star district in Kada after a spike in COVID-19 cases. Senior Minister Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakov said the EMCO will be enforced effective this midnight until the 25th of September. The city minister said the matter was decided at a special meeting today after taking into account the increase in COVID-19 positive cases involving Sungai and Tawa clusters in the district. He said the standard operating procedure SOP in the district was the same as other administrative EMCO SOP including entry and exit bans where the Royal Malaysia Police PDRM and the Malaysian Armed Forces MAF would be setting up roadblocks. Hanya ketua keluarga dan seorang dari sesebuah rumah dibenarkan untuk keluar untuk membuat pembelian barang makanan dan keperluan keluarga. Manakala bagi kenderaan yang membawa produk esensial ataupun uh, keperluan dibenarkan untuk keluar masuk. Walau bagaimanapun mereka perlu mendapatkan kebenaran daripada pihak PDRM. Ferry dari Kuala Kedah yang dipahamkan termasuk dalam Kota Star ini, daerah Kota Star, tidak dibenarkan beroperasi. Dato' Sri Ismail Sabri explained that only essential stores will be allowed to open, including food providers, grocery stores, petrol stations, clinics and hospitals. Clinics and hospitals are allowed to operate for 24 hours, while food providers are only allowed to have takeaway and no dine-in guests. He also announced that the administrative EMCO implementation in Amanjaya is extended until 13 September. Meanwhile, the National Security Council has decided to allow all food outlets and convenience stores to open till 2 a.m. starting tomorrow. Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri said the decision was made following complaints received from business operators about a lack of income due to limited business operating hours. Banyak rumutan terutamanya di kawasan-kawasan pelancongan seperti di Langkawi, Pulau Langkawi misalnya. Mereka terpaksa tutup sehingga pukul 12. Hiburan sudah tidak ada kerana kita tidak benarkan makan sajalah yang boleh. Jadi bagi pelancong-pelancong ke Langkawi dan sebagainya, mereka pengusaha-pengusaha meminta kepada supaya kita melanjutkan tempoh selama 2 jam lagi dan mesyuarat bersetuju. Bukan saja di Langkawi, pusat-pusat peranginan lain malah restoran-restoran, uh, uh, convenience store, kedai serbanika dan sebagainya boleh dibuka sehingga pukul 2. 
Besides that, foreigners are also allowed to pray in mosques, including Friday prayers, but they must adhere to the SOP. Malaysia has confirmed 45 new COVID-19 cases today with 40 of them coming from the Benteng LD, Lahad Datu, cluster in Sabah. This brings the total of cases under the cluster, currently Malaysia's biggest and active COVID-19 cluster, to a total of 170 cases. At a press conference held, Director General Tan Sri Dr. Noor Hisham Abdullah said of the 45 cases, 44 were local transmissions and only one was an import case. Dari 44 kes penularan di dalam negara, 11 adalah di kalangan warga negara Malaysia dan 33 adalah bukan warga negara. Perincian kes adalah seperti berikut. Di negeri Kedah, 4 kes penularan tempatan dilaporkan iaitu satu kes daripada kluster sungai, dua kes daripada kluster telaga dan satu kes saringan bergejala di Klinik Kesihatan Simpang Kuala dan beliau telah dimasukkan ke Hospital Sultanah Bahia. Di negeri Sabah, 40 kes daripada kluster Benteng Lahad Datu dilaporkan di mana 33 kes melibatkan bukan warga negara. Of the 40 new cases under the Benteng LD cluster, 35 are detainees while 6 are family members of prison staff. All of the new cases were detected at the Tawau prison in Kedah. There were 4 new cases with 2 of them linked to the Telaga cluster and one related to the Sungai cluster. Another case was detected from the Simpang Kuala Clinic in the state following screening conducted on symptomatic individuals. The sole import case involves a Malaysian returning into the country from Brazil. Meanwhile, 24 patients were discharged, meaning the total of recoveries is 9,167 or a rate of 95.2%. The total number of active cases in the country has now gone up to 333 cases, with a cumulative total of cases since the outbreak began in January at 9,628. Currently, nine people are being treated at intensive care units ICU, with five of them requiring ventilator support. No fatalities were reported, with the death toll in the country remaining at 128 or at a rate of 1.35%. The Health Ministry has received more than 11,700 calls to its psychosocial support hotline between the 25th of March until 31st of August. Its Minister, Dr. Sri Dr. Adam Baba, said over 50% of the callers are facing various psychological issues related to stress, anxiety and despair. Dr. Sri Dr. Adam explained that among the factors callers facing the psychological issues were loss of jobs, no source of income, interpersonal relationships, isolation and reduced access to mental health help and services during the Movement Control Order, MCO. Panggilan yang dilakukan adalah untuk maklumat berkaitan COVID-19 sebanyak 17%. Dan ketiga, isu rumah tangga termasuk penderaan dan keganasan rumah tangga sebanyak 8%, 7.4% masalah kewangan dan isu bantuan kewangan seperti seperti sumbangan-sumbangan dan 3.4% masalah psikiatri. The psychosocial support hotline was set up on the 25th of March in collaboration with Mercy Malaysia to help Malaysians cope with the COVID-19 pandemic. The support line operates from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. daily at 03 2935 9935. Meanwhile, on attempted suicide cases, Dr. Sri Dr. Adam said, the ministry also supports calls by non-government organizations to decriminalize suicide as the government is aware that attempted suicide cases are worrying and must be addressed. He added that the Attorney General's Chambers is currently studying the laws related to accomplice and attempted suicide offences in the country. He said efforts made towards decriminalising attempted suicide cases will give a chance for those who need help to come forward and to receive treatment without facing any stigma. 
Deputy Communications and Multimedia Minister Dato Zahiri Zainul Abidin today made a formal apology to the Dewan Negara for confusing the Senate with his statement in the Upper House last week on Sabahan Les Viviona Mosibin. This is with regards to Dato Zahiri's claim that Viviona was an attention seeker who tried to gain views for her YouTube channel when she posted a video of her climbing a tree to gain better internet access to sit for online examinations during the recovery movement control order RMCO period. Saya ingin memohon maaf uh, dengan keizinan Tuan Yang Dipertua untuk membuat permohonan itu di Dewan Mulia ini kerana menimbulkan kekeliruan dalam hal adik Vivi Misbun ini. Maaf juga kerana maklumat daripada wakil rakyat kawasan menyebabkan rasa tidak puas hati setengah pihak. Mungkin pendapat saya telah disalah tafsir di daerah dan pekan Pitas. Terdapat liputan dan pusat internet namun ia perlu ditambah baik secara keseluruhan. Dewan Negara Speaker Tan Sri Dr. Rais Yatim made a ruling early in the afternoon today for Dato' Zahidi to explain his statement on Viviona to the House and to issue an apology to the relevant party. Failing to do so, the latter will be referred to the Parliament's Rights and Privileges Committee. In June, Viviona, a student of University Malaysia Sabah, UMS, who hails from Kampung Sabatalang in Pitas, made headlines after a video of her climbing a tree to gain better internet access to sit for online exams examinations during the RMCO was shared on social media. Yang Dipertuan Agong Al Sultan Abdullah Rayatuddin Al Mustafa Billah Shah has handed over house keys and offer letters to 54 recipients of the Rumah Wilayah Prihatin. The recipients consist of the poor single mothers and people with disabilities who are renting in the People Housing Project PPR or DBKL Public Housing PA DBKL. His Majesty, accompanied by the Raja Pemaisuri Agung, Tunku Haja Aziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria, were welcomed on arrival at the presentation ceremony at the Muhiba Community Complex here by Federal Territories Minister Tansri Anwar Musa and Tanaga National Berhad TNB Chairman Datuk Sri Madze Khalid. The Rumah Bilaya Prihatin Program is implemented by the Federal Territories Ministry in collaboration with the Kuala Lumpur City Hall, DBKL, TNB and Yayasan Wilayah to provide opportunities for hardcore poor families who are tenants of the existing People's Housing Project PPR or DBKL Public Housing PA DBKL to own a house. The ownership of these houses cannot be transferred to a third party via sale. The houses are also equipped with 50,000 ringgit worth of furniture, including electrical appliance and household items. <laughs> Next, remand of four factory managers over Sungai Gong pollution extended. The remand of four factory managers suspected to be involved in the water pollution incident of Sungai Gong, Rawang was extended today by another five days. The order to further remand the man was issued by Magistrate Nick Muhammad Fadli, Nick Azlan. The suspects, who are also brothers, had been remanded earlier for six days from Saturday and were brought to the Salayang Magistrates Court at 9.15am. At the same court, a factory worker who is in his 30s was remanded for six days from today in connection with a similar incident after being arrested in Gomba yesterday. All of them were remanded for the investigation under Section 430 of the Penal Code. Following oil pollution, which allegedly came from the factory, four Sungai Selango Water Treatment Plants, LRA, had to suspend operations last Thursday, disrupting water supply to a total of 1,292 areas in the Klang Valley and affecting almost 1.2 million users. Three immigration officers were remanded for five days from today to assist in investigations into a corruption case. The remand orders on the officers, one of them a woman, were issued by Magistrate Shahwira Abdul Halim in Putrajaya today. 
According to a Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission MACC source, the officers aged between 33 and 35 were detained between noon at 5.50pm at the MACC headquarters yesterday. The personnel are suspected to have received bribes to expedite the process of issuing passes to foreigners to return to their country of origin without going through the online appointment system STO. According to the source, the officers have been dealing with a middleman since the implementation of the Recovery Movement Control Order are MCO to manage the issuance of passes to foreigners who have overstayed in the country to return to their country of origin. The source said the three suspects were said to have received bribes of between 300 ringgit and 500 ringgit for each pass issued without going through the STO. Yesterday, according to the MACC source, two individuals, including an immigration officer, were also remanded for five days to assist in investigations into the same case. Putrajaya, MACC Director Hasbila Muhammad Salih, confirm the arrests. Three teenagers have been remanded today on suspicion of assaulting their schoolmates at a secondary school dormitory in Tanah Merah, Kelantan on Tuesday. The four-day remand order was issued by Magistrate Muhammad Zul Zaki Kudin Zulkifli. The trio, all aged 17, was detained to assist investigations under Section 506 of the Penal Code for criminal intimidation and Section 3 through 3 of the same code for voluntarily causing hurt. In the incident on Tuesday, a Form 1 student was beaten up by his seniors over a joke gone awry. It is learned that the victim had joked about treating the suspects to fast food but did not follow through the offer. A 25-second video of the beating allegedly taken by one of the suspects went viral on Wednesday. Clanton Police Chief Deputy Commissioner Shafian Mamad said police received a report from the victim on the assault and proceeded to make the arrests. The Housing and Local Government Ministry will tighten housing development laws involving the quality of construction, especially affordable housing and civil servants' housing projects. Its minister, Zuraida Kamarudin, said the move was necessary following various safety issues raised over the poor conditions and quality of houses built by developers. She said the action taken by the ministry is to blacklist developers who fail to meet the specifications, but there are still gaps in the system because there were developers who got back into business by setting up another company. Zuraida added the law needs to be tightened to ensure that developers fulfill their promise to adhere to quality standards that have been set. She said this after launching the digital My First Home Scheme, digital SRP, in the nation's capital today. She was commenting on the issue of uncertainty satisfactory development quality involving projects under the ministry such as the Malaysian Civil Servants Housing Project PPAM in Bukit Jalil and PPAM Residency Bayu Andaman in Sentul. Zuraida said the ministry has been monitoring the situation since 2018 but there are still developers who fail to comply with the standards set by the government. Bank Negara Malaysia, BNM, has decided to maintain the overnight policy rate, OPR, at 1.75%, the lowest level since it was implemented in 2004. In a statement, its Monetary Policy Committee, MPC, said the global economy continues to improve with the easing of containment measures across more economies and strong policy support. The central bank said the reopening of production facilities has led to a resumption of manufacturing and trade activity. However, the recovery in the services sector has been slower. It said so far the financial conditions have improved, although risk aversions remain elevated. It said the outlook is still subject to downside risks and uncertainty, primarily due to the risks of a resurgence of the pandemic and weaker labor market conditions. The central bank explained that economic activity in Malaysia continues to recover from the trough in April this year and the latest high frequency indicators show that labor market conditions, household spending and trade activity have continued to improve. It said the economic recovery is also supported by the fiscal stimulus packages alongside monetary and financial measures, adding that the improvement is expected to continue into 2021, supported by the recovery in external demand and expansion in private sector expenditure. For the record, BNM has reduced the OPR 
four consecutive times since the start of the year, starting with the two 25 basis points BPS cuts during the January and March meetings, followed by a 50 BPS cut in May and another 25 BPS cut in July. KUFC received an official letter from the Football Association of Malaysia FAM yesterday confirming that its application for privatization has been approved. KUFC Executive Secretary Wan Mamad Zul Iqman said FAM, through its Pro Football Task Force, had reviewed all the seven steps of the privatization process before approving the club's application. According to Wan Mohamad Zul, the club had fulfilled all the criteria set and submitted all documents on the 1st of September last year, adding KUFC managed to get its privatization approved before the 30th of September closing date. However, he said KUFC's participation in international or Asian Football Confederation EFC tournaments would depend on acceptance of KUFC's club license this year. Wan Mohamad Zul said for now, 95% of related documents have been sent to FAM for club licensing proposals. That's it from us this evening in our top story. Flash floods hit KL following three hours of heavy rain. Join us for updates at noon at 12.30 tomorrow. Till then, I'm Brendan Lipal. Thanks for watching. Good night.